In this video I'm going to show taking a design that has been imported from Omega and coloring it. So the first thing that I'll do is take out all the colors since they come in a little bit odd. So I will double click to select everything and then I will hold shift and hit fill grayscale and that will take every uh, one of the fills out and just leave me with black outlines. Then I'll take the text over here and combine that together so that I can actually I'm going to hide it for now so I'll hide that and then these pieces down here I don't need so I'll get rid of those if I zoom in there's an outline on this and I'll get rid of that just hitting delete on the keyboard and the last thing is this design over here um, has parts that uh, need to be fixed in order for it to be sandblastable so I'll go ahead and fix those first so I'll bring some of this stuff over a little bit, make sure it's all overlapping. And now I'll use my virtual segment delete to delete these pieces here. The reason that I had them overlap was so that at the intersections they would delete. That's the way that virtual segment delete works. I think what I'll do is I will draw a line from here down to here that way we can actually keep that interior piece there okay so that's got those pieces all done so what I need to do is uh, join them so if I hold down shift then they'll get joined together um, after I marquee around them so the next thing that I'll do is I'll grab these inside pieces and hit fill grayscale and what that'll do is combine all of the inside pieces and turn them the right color oh, it looks like I've got stuff grouped so I'll actually ungroup all that too I just select uh, the die and hit 6 on the keyboard which will give it a 30 percent gray fill and then these inside pieces once again all I do is hit fill grayscale on those or I can just hit F and I move them to the front with shift page up same thing with this here and then we've got the cross so I'm just hitting six every time I uh, want to fill those in this text I will turn black and then the base I will hit four no five sorry to give it a rock pitching fill um, there's also gaps between these uh, so I think what I'll do is I'll join them or snap them a little bit closer together. So I'll just zoom in here and snap right there. And I'll do the same thing with this. Select it all and then I'll come here and snap right here. Hit F4. Take my base and I'll actually just move it up. Doesn't really matter but I like to keep things together that way. All of these pieces here, if I group them together, I can hold shift and select the die and then hit C to center and that will make sure that they're all centered on the base. Sorry, I said die, I meant base. Okay, the only thing that we've got here is these rings, those inside parts I would want to keep polished, so I'll just knock those out like this and hit escape to end my knockout. And then one other thing that I like to do usually is to add a bit of shading. So if I just take a rectangle and draw from here to there, turn it black, and then I can do a transparency like this. And that'll give it just a little bit of uh, shading between my base and my, my die. I could do the same thing here for the cross. Um, and I'll, I'll just go ahead and do the whole thing cross itself just to make it easier so I just made a duplicate of that cross and turn that into a transparency that way it shows a little bit of depth there um, the plinth depending on if it's actually larger or smaller than the uh, the rest of it I, I could go ahead and do a drop shadow and um, that would give it a little bit of uh, an effect there. I, I don't know if I'd want to do that or not, but it might not be a bad idea. The one thing with the drop shadow is the top part 
doesn't quite look right, so maybe I'll break that drop shadow apart and take it, uh, convert it to a bitmap. And then I can take this and, and drag it down a little bit. That way it's only casting a shadow there. Um, and I could, I suppose, add a node and angle that a little bit. I don't know. That's just getting a little bit picky, probably. But there we've got that. And then if we wanted to show it in the granite color, we'll just come over here and choose uh, Georgia blue for the fill. And that would fill it all in for us. If we wanted to get a little bit more fancy, we could add some depth to the carving. Um, but that just depends on how fancy we want to get, I guess. And then uh, to send it out to the customer, I'll just hit this JPEG button and it'll send out a JPEG that I can easily email. Oh, I forgot. We've got the stuff that's hidden. So we'll go to hide and say show all objects. That leaves us with that text that we've got. So I will send that out as a JPEG instead. I wasn't even paying attention uh, to notice that her name isn't even on here. So if I click on it, um, we'll see that there's something selected there. If I hit V to go to wireframe, it's actually there and it's combined with everything. It's just not um, filling in appropriately. So what I can do is take my shape tool, select those pieces, and then reverse the uh, curve direction, which will make it fill correctly. Uh, there's something called a winding rule that determines which way things get filled when they're combined. And anyway, so we'll just uh, switch that and then go back up to JPEG and send it back out.